<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. I guess welcome and hello. Today, uh, today is Thursday, but this is definitely not a vlog. I wanted to make this quick video just to address a few things. I wanted to talk about the Kav Kavanaugh comment a little bit. I wanted to talk about that rhythm mod just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to be doing a vlog this week. Here's the thing. Let me just explain myself to you guys real quick. Here's the thing. I just have a lot going on. I've got so much going on. The 510 report, I, I love it. It's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I have a lot of things on my plate as far as reviews go, as far as the 510 report goes, as far as my wedding goes. It's literally one month away at this point. So the vlog is going to be taking a little bit of a break. It's just a little hiatus. Think of this as like the summertime when your favorite show goes off the air and it's not coming back until the fall. My hiatus is gonna be substantially shorter. It's only gonna be about a month. When I get back from my honeymoon in November, that's where we're gonna pick the vlog back up. It's gonna be about a month and a week, maybe about a maybe about a month and two weeks. And what this is really going to allow me to do is to get some of the other things off of my plate and get my process a little bit more streamlined so that we can come back to the vlog sort of uh, fresh with like fresh new eyes, uh, fresh new segments, all the old segments, I really want to spend some time away from the camera to sort of like work on the vlog and get the vlog like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say make the vlog great again because I mean the vlog, I love the vlog. The vlog's kind of always been great, but I wanna make the vlog greater than it was. I wanna make the vlog better than it was and I'm gonna need time to do that and I'm gonna t need time away from the vlog in order to improve the vlog, I guess, if that makes any sense. So this is not a vlog. I, I, I'm gonna have a little bit of a pause on the vlog, but I did wanna have, I had a few things, just a few things that I wanted to mention that I wanted to talk about, uh, mostly from last week's vlog. So I had kind of made this offhand comment about Kavanaugh, and a lot of people got very upset. And this was more than just vape upset. This wasn't like, I really like this product, I can't believe you don't like it. Or I really like this juice, I can't believe that you don't like it. This was toxic. This was beyond that type of arguing. There weren't this many weird comments even when I talked about religion, which I thought for sure would just be a real iffy, sketchy subject and topic to talk about. I waited months and months before I was ready, before I was comfortable to talk about religion in the vlog, and I talked about it, and I feel like uh, I feel like it went really well, and I kind of went, whew, all right. I genuinely thought the religion topic <laughs> in the vlog was going to, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought it would stir some things up. I, I was afraid, honestly, of, of what people were going to say. I was really kind of meticulous in the words that I was choosing and, and how I was choosing to say them. And then last week in the vlog, uh, I made some off offhand comment about Kavanaugh. So he, here's actually here's what I actually said. And then we have and then we have Kavanaugh. And like I know I'm switching topics pretty quickly here, but now we have Kavanaugh, who is accused of sexually assaulting people when he was in high school, right? Horrible experiences, right? I don't like Kavanaugh. I don't trust Kavanaugh. Even if Kavanaugh is innocent, which I don't believe he is innocent, but even if he is innocent, after seeing Kavanaugh's testimony, I do not want him on the Supreme Court. Just looking at his temperament and his disposition, I don't want him on the Supreme Court. I mean, that's a very important position to give to this guy. <sighs> that wasn't even something I was really planning on saying. I just kind of said it in the moment based on the information that I had at that time, which is now over a week ago. And I don't want this to be some sort of like a backpedaling thing, like I'm gonna apologize for everything I said in that because I'm not going to apologize for everything I said in that. I did misspeak a couple of times uh, later on, not even in that particular segment. I feel like what I said in that particular clip 
isn't an unreasonable thing to say. I said, I don't believe that he is innocent. And at that particular time, based on what I had seen and the information I had available to me, I didn't think he was innocent. But ultimately, Kavanaugh got confirmed anyway, so whether or not I like the guy, that doesn't really matter anymore. And honestly, in that whole two minute little segment where we brought up Kavanaugh, or I brought up Kavanaugh for some reason, honestly, in the future, I'm probably just gonna keep my mouth shut about stuff like that. Hearing stuff like that is not why people subscribe to this YouTube, so for that, I, I absolutely apologize. And if anybody that left my subscriber base and felt the need to tell me they're leaving my subscriber base, Obviously, I would love to have you back, but if the one thing I said about Kavanaugh is enough to make you not want to watch my videos forever, well then, God damn it, I just got to admire that kind of conviction. And I just want to make it very clear, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not, an, I'm not a right-winger. I'm not a left-winger. I'm not an alt-right person. If I had to choose something to pigeonhole myself into, I guess I'm closest to a libertarian. I'm really much more of a constitutionalist, I guess. I'm not some social justice warrior. I absolutely believe in innocent until proven guilty. I am adamantly, adamantly, adamantly against like, you know, getting judged in the court of public opinion. That is one of my most, uh, you know, stick in my craw sort of things that happens. I hate the judgment in the court of public opinion. And unfortunately, I kind of fell right into it. I, I should have been more objective about things. I've said this in the past and I'll say it now. The facts do matter. The facts always matter. And moving forward, I am going to make an honest effort to be more objective about things like this. But ultimately, you'll have no idea because I'm just not gonna talk about things like this anymore. There's going to be times where you and I are definitely going to disagree. There are going to be times in, in, in everybody's life when you meet someone that you disagree with or that hold different beliefs than you or hold different opinions than yourself. And unfortunately, in 2018, it's kind of become this really toxic, like all, all people want to do is attack other people. You know, people talk about the nation being divided on all of these subjects and how it's getting, you know, it's getting to like the tipping point and people are just, I mean, literally attacking other people in the streets at protests and it happens on YouTube too, man. And the first thing, you know, you see someone on YouTube who has a different uh, opinion than you or or a different belief than you or, or says this when you believe this, it's like a lot of people's instant gut reaction to just instantly attack that person. I find it's much better to have a discussion, like the free marketplace of ideas, open discussion up around these topics and maybe in a sort of calmer, sort of more uh, reasonable way. You can you can converse and you can talk to the other person. Why, why do you think the way that you do? Well, here's how I think. How do you think the way that you do? These are my reasons. What, you know, what are your reasons? And 99% of this stuff I think could be solved with just some calm, honest, just conversation open up the conversation, right? I don't feel like there's this need to just constantly attack, like constantly, constantly, constantly be on the attack. So I had to turn off the comments of that particular video because that was getting real bad. There were a lot of threats going on. There was a lot of uh, really anger-filled comments going on there. It, it was really toxic. It's, it's like nothing I had ever seen before in any one of my videos, so I just turned the comments off. I did screen capture a few of the comments that I wanted to address as well as, you know, kind of a funny one at the end, but I did screen capture some of the comments that I wanted to address, like this one here from Bird Keepers. Snowflake, you of all people should realize that not everything you see on CNN is 100% objective truth. I don't remember uh, 
mentioning CNN or saying anything that I saw on CNN. Isn't that like the whole point of advocacy to counter propaganda? Your opinion that Kavanaugh is not telling the truth is based on exactly that, misinformation and propaganda. And you fell for it because you're a knee-jerk liberal snowflake who is incapable of thinking for himself and needs other people to think for you. Which again is ironic considering your stance on vaping regulation issues. So yeah, just a lot of uh, very helpful name calling. You know, it's always the best way to, to change someone over, to, to try to get your point across to someone is definitely to call them names. I don't remember mentioning CNN. I don't ever remember saying that Kavanaugh wasn't telling the truth. And apparently I'm a snowflake that is a knee-jerk liberal who is incapable of thinking for myself and I need other people to think for me. That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. I mean, honestly, I have pretty thick skin. That cut me down pretty quick. I had another comment that was fairly impactful on me from Tim. Been with you since May 2011 and you are my first video I watched on vaping and stopped the smokes. I expected higher standards from you, Nick. I no longer want to be the cool kids. Best of luck to you and all you do. Yo, yo, I'm out. Peace. And Tim tweeted this same thing at me on Twitter and I kind of gave him a little bit of like an asshole response. I just said bye and that wasn't right. I, I need to apologize to Tim for that. I, I saw your comment on I saw your comment on YouTube, Tim, and uh, it, it affected me. Like, it really affected me, and it put me in kind of a weird mood. And, and then I saw your tweet again on Twitter, like you tweeted at me after I already had saw the comment, and I had seen it twice. And seeing it twice in the same day, I was like, Tim, okay, I get it, bye. Like, I really kind of uh, got a little bit emotional, I guess kind of like Ted Kavanaugh did. And I had another comment here from American Liberty. Not only were you the first vape reviewer I subscribed to on YouTube, you were the first I subscribed to, period. After this post, I will be unsubbing. My wonderful country is on the verge of a civil war. I would love to see your reaction after being vilified on every media slash entertainment outlet across America for 10 days straight to an event you knew was a complete lie. Hmm, you drink beer? I guess that makes you a gang rapist too, does it? Now that you have been accused, how do you defend yourself against the loudest hate mongers of our society? So sad that people like you are not smart enough to look at the insanity in the world around you and notice that it's insane. Good luck, brother. Hope you wake up before Gottlieb is the least of your worries. Unsubscribed. I do drink beer. I've, I've consumed beer in this vlog. I consume, I don't know, two or three beers a week. Certainly doesn't uh, make me a gang rapist as well, American Liberty. I, I didn't say that in, in, the, in the vlog video. I didn't say that because Ted Kavanaugh drinks beer that he's obviously a gang rapist. Those words didn't come out of my mouth at all. The entire point uh, of everything that I had mentioned uh, about Kavanaugh and, and even my offhand comment about how I didn't think that he was innocent at the time. It wasn't really about Kavanaugh. It wasn't about what Kavanaugh did or didn't do. I should not have taken the focus off of that, but I did. What that segment was actually about, the point of what I was trying to say. Kavanaugh in that situation was honestly just a red herring to the point I was trying to make. And, and the point that I was trying to make there was that we're not holding beer manufacturers responsible for what people who drink beer do when they are drinking beer, but we're holding Juul responsible for what people are doing with their products. I was trying to point out this insane precedent that Scott Gottlieb has set, where now we're holding manufacturers responsible for what the individual does with their products. That is the point I was trying to make. I should not have mentioned anything else about Kavanaugh because that's the point I was trying to make. And I think that that point is a bigger point, a more important point, you know, as far as the vape world goes, than what Kavanaugh actually did or did not do. And somewhere in and amongst all of the really, really angry, uh, really very angry comments, I mean, really very angry comments on there. I, I was, I was honestly shocked. I was blown away. I was completely, completely blown away. But in and amongst all of these really angry, really hate-filled comments of uh, lots, lots of people telling me that they're unsubscribing, which 
I, I apologize. Of course, I would love you to come back. You're more than welcome to come back anytime if you want to give me a second chance. And again, if you don't, if you refuse to watch another Grim Green video because of one thing I said over the course of 10 years, then then like I said before, God damn it, you just got to admire that conviction. But in and amongst all of those comments, there was one comment from a guy named Steven that really really very struck a chord with me. But Steven left a comment. I've been subbed for years and I'm not going to unsub over this, but I wanted to say that this vlog was the first time you actually annoyed me. If a woman came out and said that several years ago you sexually assaulted her at a vaping event, but she can't remember where it was or when it was, by your logic, we should believe her and you're automatically guilty. Also, do you know how many times I've seen you get angry over vape bashing stories and studies, but you want to judge the emotional actions of a man who is defending his name, family, and career. Steven, thank you for that comment. You make a lot of really excellent points. And unlike, okay, well, I don't want to upset anybody else, but unlike Steven Crowder, I'm actually open to having my mind changed about things. I am a firm believer in science, and I am a firm believer in truth. And if you're a firm believer in science, one of the things that you kind of I need something to hold. I need a thing to hold. I'm holding a fingernail right now and that is gross. Here, give me something to hold. <laughs> See, and I just got so worked up about having something to hold that I don't even remember what I was talking about. Steven, that's right. We're talking about Steven and we were talking about if you are a, a firm believer in science, one of the things that you have to get used to, and it's one of the things that I've gotten used to over my years, is being proven wrong and not just not just being proven wrong, but being proven wrong and then being able to accept that and then learn from that and move forward with a maybe newly formed sort of opinion or fact in your head. I mean, Stephen laid it out for me real black and white. If this situation happened, yeah, I, I mean, I would be emotional. I, I had not thought about that before, which is why I like getting helpful information like this without being attacked. That's genuinely something I didn't think about before. I would probably be emotional. I would probably be yelling. I would probably do very similar things that Kavanaugh was doing. And I have, I, I have got very, very emotional and ragey and yelling at things like vape stories and vape studies. So. I get it that humans are emotional creatures, you know what I mean? And you kind of view politicians and, and, and people that are in those types of situations to be less, I don't know, less human, less emotional. Like Kavanaugh is going to be on the Supreme Court, which is a lifetime, uh, you know, position. And you kind of get this view of certain people that are in those public arenas like that, like on the Supreme Court to be very objective, emotionless, objective, the truth is what matters, right? Like emotionally devoid of things like that, able to weigh right and wrong and the law and breaking the law and truth and lies. You have to be able to like decipher that. And so I was kind of expecting someone who's up for a Supreme Court nomination to be a little bit more focused, a little bit more, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the right word here, a little bit more, you know, composed, I guess. And and you kind of forget that humans are emotional creatures and he is being an emotional person and yelling and defending himself. And I, you know, I can't hold that against him because like Stephen pointed out, shit, man. I mean, I probably would have reacted the same way. I probably would have done the same thing. So again, I mean, I'm a reasonable person. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with having my mind changed. It's something I look forward to. So thank you. Thank you. Huge thank you to Steven for, for, for being a reasonable person and for presenting it in a way that it, I don't know. It really struck a chord with me, Stephen. I, I really appreciate it. In fact, Stephen, I would love it if you would email me, nick at grimgreen.com. I'd love to send you out just a little something, just a little thank you for, uh, just a little thank you for being something that actually uh, changed my mood on an otherwise real, 
real bad day. I was having a real bad day. I was reading these comments and it was, I mean, I felt, uh, I felt awful. I felt horrible. I felt defeated. I was like, you know, it was just a lot. It was just a lot going on that day. And Steven is the one who kind of made me see, you know, uh, kind of see another side to it. And, you know, we have this attacky mode. It's just, I don't know what it is. We talked about it last week as well. The, the you know war of the loud. We've become loud and we've become angry. And you know you don't you can't, you don't win people over by just uh, yelling at them and calling them names. Like if you go on the internet and you, and you see someone who disagrees with you or people who disagree with you or people that hold different beliefs and anything like that, and you're just like you know command keyboard commando like you liberal snowflake you you're spineless and you need someone to think for you because you don't have a fucking brain like. No one's going to read that. You know, the person isn't going to read that and go, oh, like maybe I am a liberal snowflake and I don't think for myself. And wow, I'm really going to turn my life around. Like nobody is going to do that. So, Stephen, thank you again for being able to change my mind a little bit in a very, I don't know, sort of reasonable, reasonable way. Right. And, you know, I, I like having my mind changed. Like I said, Stephen Crowder. I like I watch Steven Crowder. Does anybody else watch Steven Crowder? That's that's some entertaining stuff. Steven Crowder is a perfect example of someone that I subscribe to who I might not agree with everything that he says. In fact, it's like 50-50 shot with Steven Crowder these days. And he does those change my mind things. I will do one of those change my mind things because open discourse, this open marketplace of ideas where we can share our ideas and share our beliefs and share, you know, what we think about certain things, like without attacking each other. That's, that's just the world, you know, that's just the world, uh, that's just the world I want to live in. And Tim, I want to give a specific, specific apology to Tim. Uh, for some reason, Tim, your comment where you said you've been with me since May 2011 and uh, you expected higher standards from me and you no longer want to be part of the cool kids. Um, because of that one Kavanaugh comment, that I don't know. That really got to me. <laughs> like, I have pretty thick skin after being on the internet for 10 years and reading 10 years of YouTube comments. I, I have some pretty thick skin. That 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 got under my skin. That that really uh that cut pretty deep there, Tim J. And so here's what I'll say to Tim. I apologize. I would love to have you back. I'm not gonna sit in here and beg you to to stay and please Tim watch my videos, but I will say I am open to having my mind changed. I'm a lot more reasonable. I'm gonna promise to be a lot more reasonable in the future. And Tim, if you decide to come back, which no pressure don't have to come back. But Tim, if you decide to come back, um, I, I, I will do my best uh, to not let you down again. Because, you know, the old saying goes, all your heroes will let you down. And I didn't want to let you down last Thursday, Tim, but apparently that's what happened. So honestly, I'd love for you to give me a second chance. At the end of the day, I'm just a, I'm just a guy. I'm just a human uh, that is emotional. I'm an emotional creature. And uh, sometimes things get said that can't be taken back. And uh, all you can do is re, re, you know, reevaluate how you think and then move on, move forward and, and try to be a better person moving forward. So that's what I'm gonna do. And if you wanna talk about politics, I'm, look, I, I have some regrets. I have some political regrets. You want to talk about political regrets? Senator Ron Johnson is my number one political regret right now. Um, Senator Ron Johnson was up for re-election for his seat in the House of Representatives, I believe. Representative Ron Johnson. No, he's a senator. So he was up for he was up for re-election, being a senator. I, I get things politically confused in my head. There's Look, there's a lot going on and I barely have a high school education. So also there's that. I'm just throwing that out there as well. But Senator Ron Johnson got reelected by Vapors and he made a video after he got reelected that said, thank you to the Vapors for getting me reelected. I promise to fight for vaping rights. And then just nothing, not a thing not a one thing no fighting for vapors rights i i've hit him up on twitter multiple multiple times like hey ron remember when you said you were going to fight for vapors rights we sure could use some of that 
action right now, vapors got him reelected. And, and we all, like a lot of vapors and a lot of vape advocates were like, stand behind Senator Ron Johnson. Like, we got to get this guy reelected. He's going to do really good things. We did. We got him elected. Think about that. The vapors got him elected. And he acknowledged that the vapors got him elected. We got him elected. And then he didn't do anything anything that he said he was going to do. I don't I mean, I don't know why I'm super surprised. He is a politician after all, and I know that some of them do follow up, but I feel like the majority of them do not follow up. Another, another political, uh, this one really sticks in my craw, Duncan Hunter. Man, Duncan Hunter from California was supposed to be like our white knight. He was he was the representative that vaped inside, like inside session, like with other Congress people and representatives. Congress people? It's not Congress. It's the House of Representatives. Representative Duncan Hunter in the House of Representatives. He, he was it was on the news. He was the vaping, you know, uh, representative, and he was vaping inside, and he had this whole huge like repeal and replace strategy set in place for the FDA deeming regulations. I drove out to Alpine, California to meet with Duncan Hunter in person and have a conversation with the guy and talk about, uh, you know, uh, vaping and the FDA and all of this stuff. And even in that conversation, I was like, this is our guy. Duncan Hunter is our guy. He is he's going to make some real change. He's going to get in there. He's going to ruffle feathers and he's going to shake things up and he's going to defend vaping and then and then nothing. And now, you know, fast forward to 2018, Duncan Hunter's probably going to jail. And that was another example of like I believed in this person. I believed in Duncan Hunter and I got all, we got all the support for Duncan Hunter. We were, you know, all these vapors were supporting Duncan Hunter. And lots of vapors that I talked to like it, you know, vapors in, in higher places than myself, vapors who, who run large companies were all but like behind Duncan Hunter. Now, no, nothing. He can't, he literally can't do anything. He's nothing. He's under investigation and the guy's probably going to jail. That's my second political regret. One of my biggest political regrets of all time. So I'm not perfect. I'm fallible. People are also very fallible and, uh, you know what? Moving forward, I guess there just has to be a lot more understanding. And also moving forward, I'm probably just going to end up keeping my fucking mouth shut about certain political issues unless they relate to vaping somehow. But I mean, we are also going to be talking about vaping a lot, which is a political thing. It's politicized. There are politicians that use vaping like as part of their campaign, like as part of their core, like, here's the thing, you know, it's tough on this strict regulations, immigration, this thing, vaping as well. It's like it's included. It's part of it. So if, if we're talking about vaping, inevitably, we're going to be talking about politics and the politicians that do or do not support vaping. We're going to be talking about Scott Godlib and the FDA and whether or not, you know, what they have to do with vaping and how the vaping landscape is going to shape change. So things are going to get a little bit political. And I would just encourage everybody to to, to have a to have a little bit more positive of an outlook. If I say something, which is probably gonna happen again in the future, but if I say something that you don't agree with or goes against your core belief system or your core political ideals, then I would expect you to tell me that in such a way that it's not just you know, an attack right you don't you don't win people over by attacking them you win people over by being a reasonable human and talking to them right anyway does that make sense i'm sorry i did get a little rambly there i did get pretty rambly there but i think that's where we're going to wrap that up i'm hoping that we can just move forward from this we can we can let the past be the past and i'm i'm definitely open to having my mind changed about topics like that so what are we going to do now? There is one other thing that I wanted to talk about this week. Um, apart from the vlog going on hiatus, which the vlog is probably going to go on hiatus for about a month and a half, and we're going to come back. I think I have a plan, and I think it's going to be. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be fairly awesome. Uh, obviously, up until. Uh, 
Well, my body just knows, I think, when I'm recording video. It's like, oh, I heard the camera beep. We should definitely burp now. But I was gonna say, um, until the vlog comes back, there's gonna be regular 510 reports. There's gonna be regular reviews. We're still gonna do the Culture of Clouds podcast. Everything else is kind of just staying the same with my big focus. Uh, my big focus is on the 510 report. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot more work than I thought it would be, but I'm determined to do it. And I'm determined to do it well, and I'm determined to do it factually. Actually, and right now, the 510 report is the, the most important thing to me. I mean, the majority of my time these days focusing on the 510 report. I, I, I do nothing but read vape articles. I do nothing but read vape studies. I do nothing but read and consume as much like vaping, data, studies, information, news reports, as much as I possibly can. I'm trying to I'm trying to learn as much as I possibly, possibly can about everything that's going on, all the ins and outs of vaping, how the FDA is handling it, how it's going politically, what the mainstream media is saying about it, what studies are getting released. We have Stanton Glantz now doing his own study funded by the FDA, which, you know, how's that gonna turn out, right? It, it, there's just so much up in the air right now. <sighs> It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I'm, it's ridiculous and I'm honestly burnt out. And that's why the vlog is taking a hiatus because I need to focus on the 510 report and I need to try to shed some of my like burnt offness. Like I'm just, it's insane. It's insane how burnt out I am. All I'm looking forward to is uh, my wedding and going on a honeymoon. That's, that's all I'm looking forward to. I hope that relieves some of my stress. So, Good Lord, rambling. We're just rambling around. We're walking around. We're talking in circles. I did want to talk about a vapey thing. I did have a vapey thing. So last week, let's get to this right now. Last week, I opened up this Rhythm mod, and this is from USonic. And this is the one that doesn't use any sort of coil heads or anything like that. It uses ultrasonic vibrations to vaporize the liquid. And the reason I opened it is I find that incredibly fascinating and i'm trying to get some more information from this company use what are they called usonasig usonasig on this rhythm sort of device because i don't know how this works i want to know how this works it, it it amazes me how clean this stays all of the juice is very well self-contained. It doesn't leak, it doesn't gurgle, it doesn't do anything. I just don't know how this works. There's a big contact on the bottom and this fits in here. And then something happens when you press the button and vape happens. And last week I had talked about, I said, oh, it tastes like a, what did I say? Hospital, it tasted like a hospital bed. The hospital bed flavor, kind of went away after, I don't know, I wanna say it was like two hours, like two or three hours after like, you know, vaping this and being like, Ugh, and then vaping it and being like, Ugh, and then vaping it. And, and I remember one moment specifically where I took a vape on it and it tasted less like a hospital bed and more like the mango blast, like that V-God mango blast we put in here. And I kind of went, <gasps> What? It was like a it was like a little glimmer of hope because I like using this thing. It's real weird and it's size real weird and it's got this real weird clicky lever right here. But the thing is, I like holding it and I like pressing this really clicky orange lever on it. So, I kind of wanted to wanted to vape it. I I thought to myself, this has like this has to break in at a certain point, right? Like it can't just continue to taste like a hospital forever. Like there has to be some sort of break in time. I doubt, I mean, I highly, highly doubt that they would have released a product to market where it's like, well, you can put your e-liquid in it, but you'll never taste it. And I tasted that first little bit of mango and it was just a little bit of like a, a glimmer of hope. So I've been vaping on this thing like crazy. I mean, like crazy. And I'm very happy to report that by the second tankful, by the second tankful, the hospital flavor, the hospital bed flavor was completely gone. All it tastes like now is Mango Blast from Vigod. And it's honestly, 
not a bad little vape. It's it's real weird. It's real unique. It doesn't vape the way you know. It doesn't vape the way that sub ohm tanks would vape or like an RTA would vape. You know, when you take a hit on a sub ohm tank, it's like instant gratification. It's like boom, vapor, just just perfect and. I did go ahead and set up the sickness colored um, Falcon resin artisan tank because I broke that black one. I had the black one and it just, it died a pretty horrible death that I'm not real excited about. I dropped it and then fucking stepped on it and bent part of it that should not have been bent and I was unable to fix it. So I was going through and I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna set up the sickness one and it's been vaping awesome. But the point is, it's a different type of vape. This. You press the button, it's instant. You press the button, your mouth is instantly filled with vapor. Like, delicious tasting vapor. This rhythm from USANASIG has like a real long sort of ramp up time, right? Even if you just like press the button and hold your ear up to it, you can hear the ramp up time. You can hear it. It starts off with like this little like, it's like, and then it starts like you can hear it like start producing the vapor after this certain like little ramp up time so when you're vaping it it's just something to be aware of i have to lung hit this it's not going to be a good mouth to lung it's not going to be a good mouth to lung because of the airflow and it's also not going to be a good mouth to lung because of that ramp up time Even if they could close off the airflow to this and make it a more, you know, you know, satisfying kind of kind of mouth to lung vape, um, you would have to do like six or seven primer puffs before you get past that ramp up time. And even when you're doing a restricted lung hit, I like. I'll press the button before it even gets into my mouth, just so I can get through some of that ramp up time before I start taking a drag on it. It provides a much, much better vape. It provides a, a much, much better vape that way in my opinion. As it stands, there's no way to adjust anything on this. So you have a battery level indicator, you don't adjust anything. There's no, you know, you can't eliminate that ramp up time by like turning up the voltage a little bit or like turning up the wattage a little bit. So it is what it is. I'm gonna spend uh, a lot more time with this because I'm insanely fascinated by it that it doesn't use any sort of like, uh, coil heads or wire or anything and like i said i don't know what's going on in here it could be cotton it could be something else some other sort of wicking material i'm still waiting for to hear back from you sonasig to get some more information about what's what exactly is going on inside of these tanks but i thought i'd give just a little update on this rhythm because it's like a complete 180 from what it was in the vlog. In the vlog it was like hospital bed i just said i was like tastes like tastes like a hospital bed but it's actually got a lot better, a lot better since then. So I wanted to do a quick little rhythm update as well. So like I said, this is not a vlog. This is probably where this video is going to end. I kind of really just wanted to talk about those two subjects. I wanted to apologize about my Kavanaugh comment and I wanted to do just a little update for the rhythm right there, just the little rhythm. So this is the, the Kavanaugh rhythm. That's a band name, I definitely called it. So yeah, this is just the Kavanaugh rhythm video. I have no other updates. I got nothing else really that I can talk about. I could do a, like a what I've been vaping, but it's kind of just the same from last week. Anyway, like I said, this is not a vlog. This is not a vlog. It is what it is. I just wanted to get some information out there. So yeah, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's really all I got for today. One last time. The vlog's taking a little bit of a break, but it will be back and it will be, I mean, I'm not gonna make this promise, but I'm kinda gonna make this promise. It's gonna be better than ever. The vlog is about to be better than ever. So get excited. Anyway, that's literally what I got for today, everybody. I'm just gonna sit here and vape some more on this Rhythm U Sauna Sig, and I think I'm gonna edit the 510 report as well. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a little bit understanding. And as always, no matter what, even if you disagree with the person, let's keep on vaping.